Tell Me About It is brought to you by Extreme Health Club. Welcome back to Tell Me About It on Glasgow EPP Channel 6, local channel. You can catch this show every Thursday night at 6 p.m. live, or you can catch it anytime on the YouTube channel. Uh, and you can catch it on 104thescore.com and kysports.tv. We are transitioning to basketball season. We'll have some football talk with uh, Trevent Hayes here in a little bit. But uh, first up, we have some basketball players from Barron County High School. We have Graham Hall and William Compton. And you guys, uh, I don't know if you guys are the torchbearers for the team this year. You lost a couple of, I don't know, okay players from last season, didn't you? Yeah. They may have scored almost every point and got almost every rebound. <laughs> but, I mean, as you guys uh, kind of transition, Graham, to uh, this season, uh, once practices officially started in October, uh, what do you look for in terms of, like, being a leader on this team? Well, I think uh – we all really got an opportunity to step up and be a leader, and I think that's something our team really needs. So we got a lot of young guys, and I think our young guys, we've got a lot of talent, and I think it's really just setting an example for the young guys, and I think we got a lot of guys who are going to step up and be leaders. Well, you did have uh, quite a few sophomores on the team last year, and um, I guess mostly guards, I think, is the way it worked out. You guys are two of the bigger guys. Uh, mm -hmm. So what are, what are some of the keys to success for you guys this season, William? Um, defense, rebounding. Uh, we lost a lot of rebounding with Eli and Aiden last year, so uh, we got to have a lot of guys step up and rebound. Is that is that one of the things like you're called upon? I mean, what's your kind of role on this team? Yeah, that and shooting, but we got to have a lot of rebounders, especially. I know Graham, you'll be one of the inside guys, or at least from what I saw during the summer and last season, that's kind of your role. So, are you also kind of called for to be some of the rebounding and inside defense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think. Uh, uh, Mason Bunch and Will, I think they both bring a lot of rebounding too that we need, uh, especially. So, when Mason's kind of a, what people like to call these days like a stretch four or stretch yeah. five, isn't he? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I mean, you you guys kind of call on him to uh, hit some threes and and create some matchup probably problems with some players uh, because of the way he plays. So, um, the season gets started in a couple of weeks. Well, really, it's about a week and a half now. And uh, what do you what are your expectations for the season, Graham? Well, I think we're going to surprise a lot of people. You know, I think we're going to be a really fun team to watch, too. we got a lot of guys who can hit shots and make plays. And, you know, a lot of people, I think their expectations aren't very high, but I think we're going to surprise a lot of people. What about for you, William? Yeah, uh, expectations don't change from last year to this year. I think uh, we still expect to play in the district championship and hopefully give ourselves a shot at Region 2. Is that one of the things about playing uh, with the Barron County Trojans is that year in, year out, no matter who graduates, who comes up, that the expectation does not change, William? Yeah, that's, we have the same expectations every year, no matter who we've got coming back. Uh, when you look at the district, um, like I said, you guys lost key players um, from last season. Uh, I think, obviously, Warren East, which won, came in last year and won the district championship, lost a bunch of key players. Uh, so when you look at the district, I mean, what do you guys think it, how it shapes up? I mean, what do you, what do you, it, what do you think competitively the district is going to be like this season? Um, you know, I think that it's kind of up in the air right now. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's got a shot, but, um, you know, hopefully we come out on top. I think that's definitely our goal. It always is. Like you said, expectations don't change, but, uh, yeah. All right. Well, this is James Brown. I've been here with Graham Hall and William Compton on Tell Me About It, Glasgow EPB Channel 6 local channel. We'll be right back with uh, head coach Warren Cunningham. Extreme Fitness has doubled in size. Now with over 8,000 square feet of co-ed weights and an upgraded 90 degree sailing therapy pool. The Extreme Fitness Campus also holds the exclusive Extreme Fitness for Women Complex and Extreme Blend Smoothie Bar. You have to experience the variety of classes to realize the impact they have on their clients. Personal training is with the best in the business and is available and tailored to fit individuals. So start your journey today at Extreme Fitness and Health Club. Trevin Hayes, KY Sports TV. We're here with James Brown, 104 The Score, and former fourth region 
current coach, but former coach of the year, Warren Cunningham. Um, we're on Glasgow Electric Plant Board, Channel 6, the local channel. Tell me about it. Coach, what are your expectations for this year? We're going, we're going to get to it early. Jump right in. Jump right, Jump right in. in. <laughs> um, well, I mean, it. the The season's changed, the the players change, but we've always tried to set the, set the stage that the expectations stay the same. Uh, we want to be competitive with everybody, anybody that we play. We always play a good schedule. We want to uh, put ourselves in position as the season goes on that, um, that man, we're playing for a district championship and uh, we want to get back to the regional tournament and get there and make some noise and, and advance. That's what it's all about. And that's what um, we've always tried to set that uh, that's our goals, you know, each year and um, with uh, regardless who you who you return or who you who you lose. And uh, we want to want to continue to do that. You're kind of in a unique position when it comes to your guards this year because they were all sophomores. But unlike a lot of times at Barron County, they also almost all played football, I think. So usually you've already got them in the gym. You've yeah. been working with them for a month, but you're kind of – their season went a little longer, and so now you're trying to get them up to speed, huh? Yeah, it is. But, I mean, those guys are – it helps that they've played a lot mm -hmm. last year. You know, both Tate and Bray both, both started and played a ton of minutes for us last year. Uh, so that's – it would – It'd probably be more difficult had they had you try and get those guys back and they hadn't played a lot, but they played a lot. Um, and, you know, we, we get an opportunity to play in the summer. Tate was hurt in the summer, didn't play any with us. Um, but those guys are sharp and, and they, um, you know, they're on top of things. So that transition with those two especially has been really easy mm -hmm. um, as far as it takes a few days to get to get the rest off of them. But they've, uh, I mean, they've jumped back in and have been have been good. Well, and then you have, I guess, Waylon Clemens, mm -hmm. who also played football and right. is one of your guards. And I guess Connor Stewart is another one that mm -hmm. I saw play during the summer. Right. Were they were they all four sophomores last year? They were, they were. And uh, you know, Waylon and Connor both started quite a bit during the summer for us, and um, you know, each bring some different things to the to the table for our team. Uh, Waylon's got some got some toughness and got some playmaking ability, can help us handle the ball, and you know, just does a variety of things. Going to rebound a little bit for us and guard. So. Um, I mean, he's a Clemens, so you know he's got some toughness about him. <laughs> and uh, but he he does a lot of good things for our team. Cash Moore is another guard that played some for us this summer. That's a senior. So mm -hmm. we got five seniors that are all going to play uh, play important roles for us. Graham Hall and William Compton, uh, as you guys talked to, um, along with Mason Bunch and, and Carter Browning, all going to have some important roles for our team. Yeah, Coach, um, you know your your team, your players told us a few minutes ago what their expectations were in the district. How do you feel that you guys set up as far as the district goes this year? Well, our district is always very competitive. Um, it doesn't matter if you, you know, some years, you know, teams return a lot of players, lose a lot of players. Obviously, a, a lot of players, a, a lot of teams in our district other than Glasgow lost a lot of significant pieces. Warren East did, we did. Uh, Allen lost their best score. Um, you know, and Glasgow returns a lot of their, their pieces. So I think that's probably early on that they have an advantage. You just hope over time. Uh, at least from our perspective, you hope over time you can get some guys' experience and you, you can be there in the end. But this district is always uh, very competitive, and even if there's a gap in talent, man, those games always have a have a way of, of working out where it comes right down to the end, and you got to make plays and and uh, get stops. You got to rebound. You got to do those things because when when you get into district play, the teams know each other, players know each other, so um, you really got to be you got to be able to execute and and um, and make plays. You know, this, this season is going to be a little bit different for you than probably your last four or five seasons in a way because you've had a series of obvious number one players or mm -hmm. one and two players who were pretty right. obvious. Uh, for you as a coach, though, this year you don't really have that. No. You have a lot more freedom. Does that allow you to kind of change how you want to – the offensive plays, defensive sets that you want you want to call? Absolutely. And, um, I mean, you got to play to the strengths of your players and um, – you know, I was thinking about that to the day because last year, I mean, you knew who was going to who was going to score for us. Eli was Eli, Aiden, Carson Beckham. Those three guys, especially, were going to be. Uh, I mean, just about every night, you knew one of those three were going to lead us in scoring. And most nights, it was Aiden, Aiden or Eli. But with this team, I think we have probably um, five or maybe six guys that could that could and will lead our team in scoring, uh, and it could be very balanced. So there's a there's a lot of advantages to that. Um, from, a, from an opponent's perspective as far as not knowing who we're going to go to or who's going to be – you can't key on one or two guys because we have a lot of guys. We're probably not going to have very many guys score 20 or 25 mm -hmm. this season like we did, but I do think we have a, um, six, seven guys that can score 10 or 12. 
So um, it's about uh, figuring those things out, maybe playing a little bit different with this, with this, this group. Um, other than Graham, we're probably not going to throw it inside a whole lot, and, and that's okay, just figuring out um, how we're going to play and um, who's going who's to play what role. Yeah. As a coach, <clears throat> do you feel it's more important to have six guys that can score 12 the same night versus having, you know, one guy that everybody expects to get 20, Depends 25? on how that one guy, how good that one guy is. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Uh, but um, I think, okay, I think it's harder to, like, as far as it, me, when we're playing somebody else, it's more difficult to scout and to prepare for a team that has multiple guys that can score. I think from that that's, perspective, that's what you're I right. was getting that's right. right. Um, but um, because if you, you can do more things on one or two guys than you can on five or six, right? So I think I think there are definitely some advantages to that um, being able to have multiple guys because we're going to play a lot of guys that can that can all bring something to the table. Whether it's you know William and Mason both shoot it really well. Uh, we got other guys that can shoot it. Bray and, and Tate can make some plays. Waylon's a playmaker. Graham is a finisher and um, makes plays. Can shoot it a little bit. So we, we've got a lot of different guys that can. Um, that can do some things, and it's about us putting putting those pieces together. But I definitely think there are, are some significant advantages to that. On the uh, defensive and rebounding side, I mean, you can't replace an Aiden Miller unless no. you have an Aiden Miller. That's right. So on that front, I guess you, you're going to require or you're going to need your guards to rebound. You're going to mm -hmm. need a bunch of different guys to try to get boards because you don't just have that one stud inside. Yeah, exactly. And, and um, I was just telling our team that the other day, you know, Aiden and Eli were probably at um, eight and seven, eight and eight, nine and seven rebounds for the season. So we're, we're probably not going to have anybody that average eight or nine, but we, we better have a lot of guys getting four or five. Mm -hmm. and, and if you do that kind of like the scoring, you can make up for it. Uh, but what we can have is one and two and three. So everybody that plays has got to help us on the glass a little bit uh, because one guy's probably not going to go get 12 very often, but uh, we, we better have five, six, seven guys that are getting five or six. Mm -hmm. We talked about the district uh, just a little bit. I, I've been reading a few things um, as far as state rankings and region rankings. You know, I'm – Call it like I see it. I, I just don't see Warren Central being the Warren Central of the last, you know, eight years. Um, but everybody still has them ranked number one, and and most of the polls have them ranked number four um, preseason in, in the top twenty-five in the state. Um, how do you think the region? Do you think the region may be a little down this year compared to the last few years? I don't know. It's it's hard to say that until you get into it. Um, obviously, Bowling Green returns pretty everybody. much everybody. Uh, and I think they're the clear number one. I think they're I think they're a, a top ten team in the state. Uh, and I think Warren Central is clearly number two. They return um, their best player, uh, and they've still got some good pieces to go with him. Just based on what I saw this summer and what I've seen with their guys in the past. So I think, especially when you're the state champion, you return your best player. You're going to get some attention just because of that. But I think they're clearly number two. I think after that, the rest of the region lost a lot of well-known players, yeah. you know, Isaiah Andrews at Warren East, Eli and Aiden with us. So, you know, there were some several important players that everybody knew that that was lost. So I think it's um, I think it's kind of early to say whether the rest of the region is down or not. I think I think over time we'll see that because, you know, in our situation, I think we have good players that just didn't get to play much last year because they're behind. Aiden Miller and Eli Brooks and, right. and those guys. So, and, and other schools are probably in the same situation. So, I think it's I think it's kind of early to say that our region is always, as you all know, it's very competitive. But it also goes through the 14th. It, it goes through Warren Central and Bowling Green until some of us do something about that. Right. Um, and, right. and that's very well deserved on on their end. But um, you know, I think uh, as far as whether it's down or, or or not, I think that I think that remains to be seen. I'm just anxious to see how the uh, – we were talking about the transition from football to basketball. You know, obviously Bowling Green is, is planning to make a run mm -hmm. to play, you know, the second week in, weekend in December. But I'd, I've been noticing that a lot of these, these Bowling Green players, um, you know, Deuce Bailey, Travy Barber, I think they've got four, four kids that um, – play significant minutes for them that are starting to get major D1 football offers. Right. And I'm just anxious to see if, if any of those kids are going to opt out of playing. Um, I hope they all do. <laughs> no, I'm, just I'm sure you do. <laughs> but I'm just anxious to see because, you know, you I'm, I'm, from no. <laughs> I'm, I'm a DJ and I are good friends. I'm an advocate <laughs> for I would tell kids him playing yeah. multiple sports. <laughs> Absolutely. But at what point do you, you know, if, if you've got a, um, you know, an offer from, a UK or U of L, like the bowling kid at, mm -hmm. at LCA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at what point do you say, hey, you know, I don't want to risk 
you know, a, a high ankle sprain that keeps me out or ACL, and I'm just going to focus on on what I'm doing. Well, I think from a from a coach's perspective, I, I think it's important that kids, if they want to play, regardless, you know, they have different roles in different sports, mm -hmm. but if they want to play, man, let, you know, that's, you only get one chance to, to play high school sports. Right. Um, and to play multiple sports. You go to college, you're not going to get that. I mean, they're not going to play multiple sports. So, um, you know, you only get one opportunity to do that. And to me, regardless whether you're um, a high level player in one sport and maybe not in another, um, you hate to see kids give up this sport because they're good at it, they help their team. Um, and, and I would feel the same way if kids were wanting to give up other sports because they had offers in basketball. Um, so you hate to see that because it, it hurts the game. You know, right. it makes teams not as good if that, if that kind of stuff happens. Um, and you, you, know, you, you just kind of hate to see it. And, and you look at college athletes, most of them were multi-sport athletes mm -hmm. in high school. Um, whether they're a college basketball player, a college football, baseball player, you know, chances are they played multiple sports. And um, you know, it's good for it's good for our sports as athletic director. It's good for our athletics that kids that we have females and males that play multiple sports. It makes our teams better. Um, and you um, you hate to see it if that if that doesn't happen. You know, it is a case that like different sports develop different skills. Sure. I um, mean, you know, if you were to play baseball, it's your the hand softball girls at Barron that we talked yeah. about doing the region in basketball. Yeah, I mean, that hand-eye coordination it. that comes Absolutely. from that. You know, if you play soccer, your foot skills that then can translate into a different sport. Mm -hmm. You know, where you're just more nimble on right. your feet because you got to be. And I always think people discount, like they go train for all these things, but they discount the actual playing of it and how that right. affects you without you even thinking about it. You know, I think our football guys, there's there's usually some physicality, there's mm -hmm. usually some toughness there that maybe some of our other guys don't have because you you got you got to have a little toughness to play football. I mean, yeah, you gotta be, you gotta be physical. No, you, I mean you're gonna you're gonna get some of those, and you got to get back up and play. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean our practice our practice has changed when the football guys get there. Yeah. I mean not just from a skill perspective, but from a physical standpoint. I think um, it was uh was it last year? I think you mentioned that that you know yeah. you could tell when. Well, when you, Aiden Miller coming in is a little bit that's a little <laughs> bit to the extreme, but even Bray and, and yeah. Bray's not the most physical, but Tate and Waylon. I mean uh -huh. those guys it, it cash it changes our practice when those guys get there. Yeah. So. Anything else? That's it. Good luck to you this season, you. and of course we'll be coming to check you out. I was, I'm, I'm really excited. I hate that Meek's gone, but it gives me a chance to go out and watch other games sure. and not be confined to one GM all year. <laughs> um, but we're looking forward to coming to watch you guys, and good luck to you. Um, Thank you. I appreciate it. And we're going to take a, another quick bait break, and when we come back, we will discuss football since it is still football season. And um, I'm going to remind James that it may be over for him, but it's not over for everybody. <laughs> Extreme Fitness has doubled in size. Now with over 8,000 square feet of co-ed weights and an upgraded 90 degree sailing therapy pool. The Extreme Fitness Campus also holds the exclusive Extreme Fitness for Women Complex and Extreme Blend Smoothie Bar. You have to experience the variety of classes to realize the impact they have on their clients. Personal training is with the best in the business and is available and tailored to fit individuals. So start your journey today at Extreme Fitness and Health Club. Welcome back to Tell Me About It. I'm James Brown here with Trevent Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> We're here on Glasgow, Glasgow EVB Channel 6. You can tell this segment's going to be a rocking one already. Rocking, rocking. Uh, we are here on Tell Me About It. You can catch the show every Thursday night at 6 p.m. live. You can catch it on the Glasgow EPB YouTube channel anytime. You can catch it on KYSports.tv and you can catch it on 104score.com. Uh, as Trevent said in the prior segment, um, my coverage of football season is over with. The Glasgow Scotties lost that Hart County Friday night, 28-21. Uh, um, but the football season is not over with. Hart County plays Union this Friday at home. Should be a heck of a game. Franklin Simpson lost to Union. They went for two yeah. for the win instead of the tie to take it to overtime. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 uh, it's a hard thing to do on the road. Well, and I, you know, a lot of times people have that philosophy. You know, you're going to try to win it on the road. You don't want to go to overtime because the longer you're there, the less chance you have. And I don't know. Well, that may be my inexperience as a head coach because I, I don't want it to come down to that one play. You don't have a kicker. So, I mean, you would have gone for two hey, anyway. I do have a kicker. Well, that's true. You Well, you didn't kick a whole lot of extra points I this didn't. year. And, you know, people didn't realize. Did you see our last kickoff of the season? Mm-hmm. My kicker, my regular kicker was hurt. Mm-hmm. 
and I have a kid today, Coach, let me kick. And at that point, I was like, okay, go kick. He did a good job. He kicked it to the team. <laughs> he did. I said, why didn't you tell me you could kick all year? <laughs> um, He's just waiting for his chance. Just when... waiting. <laughs> just waiting. But that, that, that you know, we've, we've been kind of talking about 3A all year. Yeah. Um, and the district that, that's here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I just think, I, I still think that Hart County can beat Union County. I do think they'll beat Union I think County. I actually thought Union Franklin County. Simpson was going to beat Union County. I did too. I did too. Um, so the, the tester is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but according to the RPI, mm-hmm. if Christian Academy wins, yeah. if they beat Central mm-hmm. and Lexington Catholic wins, mm-hmm. Lexington Catholic will have to go to Christian Academy. Probably the way it works out. Yeah. And if Hart County wins and Bell County wins, Bell County will come to Hart County. Yeah, the that's top, the best case scenario for Hart County. Yeah, the the four of the top five RPIs were all on the western side. Right. Uh, I think it was it was Cal, it was Union County, Hart County, and I think the other one was Mercer. Out of that, even though they got Mollywatt by Central, by Central. Yes. which was not surprising. And I did not realize, so Central plays at Cal Mm -hmm. this coming Friday, and they played during the regular season. 16-13. Yeah, I was going to say Cal barely beat them. So there's no guarantee in that game. Now, I will tell you, um, coming out of the East, I am impressed by Bell County, one, because they beat Belfry, and Belfry almost never loses in the 3A playoffs. Mm -hmm. I don't care what their record says. I mean, they came into the playoffs one year with three wins and went to the state championship, Belfry did, because they just play such a hard schedule. Uh, but Dudley Hilton is back at Bell County. You know, he was the one who turned Bell County into something in the late 90s, early 2000s. I think he was at uh, Taylor County he, for a drink of coffee. And they paid him crazy. <laughs> they, All he did was coach football. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, and that's what got Taylor County going it because Taylor County going. was not known for their football. No, no, no. So he got them rolling and now but they now are he's good. back at Bell. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'd just love to see... Just like if it were Glasgow, I mean, you know, when Glasgow's making their runs, I was going to all those games. I just like to see any local team. Yeah. And and honestly, I think if there's a year that Hart County can do it, this is the year that they can do it. I don't know if they can ever put it together, you know, mm-hmm. again the way they because this group of players they've got are they're, they're special. Mm-hmm. They've been together a long time. They've too. been together since elementary. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, the thing that impressed me about Hart County on Friday is they don't, there's nothing fancy. You know, they're not slinging the ball around the yard. They're not running spreads. It's basically a wing tee and they'd run that thing to perfection. Uh, they had two negative plays in the game, I think. And one of them got nullified by a personal foul on or unsportsmanlike on Glasgow. Uh, which turned out, I think, to be a pretty critical play because Glasgow made the stop. It was a possession that uh, Hart County eventually scored on. Mm -hmm. Um, I say that, but then again, Hart County converted a fourth and nine right before halftime for a touchdown. And then they had a wheel route. Yeah. It's an old wheel route. (laughs) It is, but that's exactly right. I mean, it's just, what do they run? Well, they run your basic stuff out of a wing tee. They just run it extremely well. And I think what happens is, is... When they send those guys in jet motions, mm-hmm. it just makes the, the linebackers have to be super disciplined. Mm-hmm. Because really on that play, I think when, when Clark came in motion and he ran the wheel, I'm, I'm almost positive that a linebacker should have went with him. So here's the, I don't know what Glasgow's defensive scheme was, but I saw this when they played McLean County. McLean County had a couple of wheel plays, and what was happening was the it looked like the outside linebacker was making the initial contact with the guy on the wheel route and then handing him off. Mm-hmm. So it was like they were not playing a man on that particular position, uh, and whomever they were handing him off to, or maybe they weren't supposed to be handing him off. Maybe they were staring in the backfield for the running play and they just let the guy go by him. So I'm not sure if it was a defensive scheme or if it was a mental breakdown right. on that particular I guy. would just about say it was a breakdown because mm-hmm. Glasgow's defensive scheme is, is good. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's what, you know, I Glasgow had a good team. They did. Uh, they're, they're good. Um, but like I said, I just think, you know, this is the year that 
Hart County is, is, is better. Yeah. Um, and, you know, moving to 4A, that should probably be the game of the – You're talking about the Corbin-Boyle County game? That, should, that game's going to be crazy. The, we, have, we have two games this week in the playoffs that tell me the RPI is failing at this point. That one right there and then the Mayfield-Lexington uh, Christian game. I mean, because there's no doubt in 2A to me, Mayfield and Lexington Christian yeah, are the two best teams. And in 4A, Ball County and Corbin are probably, probably the, two best. the top Now, 4A's two. got a bunch of really good teams in it right now. So they may be, but they shouldn't be meeting at this point either way. Right. Uh, in my opinion. Now, they may, in the old format, they probably would have been in the East and they'd have met in the semifinals before going to the state championship. And there's to the no final t- four, right. Yeah, and there's no, because of the way, the, you know, they would have had the brackets designed out there's a good chance they'd have met in that uh semifinals there but in this rpi here they are meeting in this regional round and it's just not some somehow the way they have done the rpi is just not working out it, it's not really getting the matchups it's getting the matchups you want to see but not where you think you should be seeing them right. is basically the way it's working out right so campbellsville is at home again this week yeah um i don't remember who they're playing to be honest with you uh, I don't either. Ludlow, maybe? Maybe Ludlow, because they beat KCD last week, right? No. No, KC- they beat – last week, Campbellsville beat Holy Cross. Yeah. because Yeah, it was all – Bad. Yeah, it was the four teams from that district playing each other. Right. And then KCD beat Bethlehem. So right. I think – I think I can't remember if it's Campbellsville playing Ludlow this week. But either way, uh, I think they should win – um, looks like KCD should probably win. And then that RPI will kick in, and we'll see what the 1A looks like after that. What about Bowling Green? Do you think they'll win this week? Uh, sure. I don't even know who they're playing. They'll win. But they play at home. <laughs> <laughs> Bowling Green's good. I, I mean, they lost to Christian Academy, mm-hmm. Lexington Christian Academy. But I was at that game, and that running back is different. Yeah, he is. I mean, they'd hand it to him, hand it to him, hand it to him. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Did they throw it to him? Touchdown. <laughs> right. I mean, it was every other every other play he was getting it. Well, and that's the thing. So Bowling Green won handily on Friday night. They they look as good as as expected. Meanwhile, South Warren lost at Owensboro, and that, that was really bad. surprised me. That was bad. Yeah. I mean, it's not just they lost. They got whipped. That was a running clock. Yeah. That just surprised me. I really thought – because I looked at Owensboro's that schedule. That made me not feel bad about having a run on clock in my playoff game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boy. Just have you, South Warren past state champions to have a run on clock. That, you know, hey, that, it happens to the best. Yeah, I had Owensboro, a team that had lost three games this season, including uh, two Bowling Green, I think it was, and they would lost to Madisonville North Hopkins in their own I district. I think that, that that loss that South Warren had to Bowling Green – I think that I think that kind of did them in. Yeah, I think it. You don't did. think they recovered from it? I don't think they recovered from it. That's an you know that philosophically that's an interesting thing because you you just like does a loss really matter? But it does sometimes, especially depending on how you lose. And you know I've never been a fan of those. It's a good loss. I, a no loss is a good loss. I do think sometimes I don't a loss think is a so. Good loss. I don't think so. Just like the you know let's all right high school's done. Let's talk about college. The loss to Pitt was not a good loss. It was a terrible loss. No, no, that was not a good loss. That's, but that's not what I mean. What I mean is like you have a good team that's well, not performing at the well, level you think. We're going to finish the season twelve and one. So, really? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, this is just like the year that they thought they were going to the national no. title game. They had Lamar Jackson. They messed around and that's lost that game the, to Kentucky. No, that's, we did not <laughs> think we were going to the national championship game in twenty sixteen. <laughs> The year that Louisville was set up to go to the national championship game. Well, that's the year. Was, no, it was not. <laughs> it's when sorry. Michael Bush was at, at, at Louisville. Uh. And it's when Ray Rice was at Rutgers. And we went on the road and lost a Thursday night game to Rutgers and it killed our season. No, look. Yes, that it year. is. That was the year that everything <laughs> was set up for Louisville to play in a national championship game. Except for Ray Rice. Ray Rice killed it. Snatching people into elevators and snatching Cardinals' hearts. Well, I mean, it is what it is, but we recovered. <laughs> we recovered. Oh, my gosh. All right. Rom has us in the position <laughs> to, to go to – we, we have to beat Miami. That's for certain. We have to beat Miami Saturday. If we beat Miami Saturday, it's a 100% chance that we play an ACC championship game. Uh-huh. Um, anytime that we have – 
played Florida State, and Florida State was a top five team, mm -hmm. it's never ended well for Florida State. Well, that year it's I, never it's that never that ended year, well. That year State. I was referencing is the year that um, they had one loss. They lost on the at the goal line against Clemson, and then they had beaten Florida State. And there was four plays that James Quick should. And then, uh, and then, uh, you just brought back bad memories. Kentucky, Kentucky, did they have like a backup quarterback to the backup quarterback? Is that when they started Lynn Bowden at quarterback? You know, Stanley Johnson. Oh, Stanley Johnson, Lynn Bowden knockoff. And, uh, they beat Louisville. Yeah. <laughs> so now we Aaron's have, over here giving now us we stats have the, from the now booth. We have, now we have the popcorn <laughs> gallery in the back that's referring to stats. But when I asked the popcorn gallery who UK played this weekend, mysteriously, he didn't know. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, look, he can remember who the quarterback, backup, backup quarterback was in 2016, but he can't remember the, who The Kentucky who they fans played. have given up on this season. This they, is, and, and it's every season. It happens every year. <laughs> that's why I don't understand why people buy into the hype. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, at what point? At what point is a nine and three season not going to be acceptable for for Kentucky football? Well, at what point is it not going to be acceptable? Well, I mean, you know, I mean that that's why there's a reason there's a, the common refrain in the state of Kentucky when you get to November, and it's thank goodness it's basketball season. Well, that's at UK. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you you should well, look, you said the state of Kentucky. Don't refer to Louisville. In that conversation, because we're still well, you aren't the only one who would think Louisville should be attached to Indiana, and we'd be done with it. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't either. But I'm just saying, that. be careful when you. But start you do those because things. you said we'd be done with it. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I just there's just so many U of L haters in this world. You know, I like the University of Louisville though. My daughter went there. My son's a big fan of them. So I what like, happened to you? I just don't care about any of them because I'm not from Kentucky. I mean, I, I like, I want them all to, uh, the same thing you said about the high school football thing, I feel yes. the same way about college. I mean, I, I want them all to do well. That's that high school. For me, that's high school. That's not, it, it's, but I don't want Kentucky to win. My, my favorite thing about college sports is fans. Aaron, you shake your head. Do you want to see Louisville successful and, and play in a national championship game, Aaron? In football? Yes. Be... You're not telling the truth, Aaron. <laughs> you are not telling the truth. Aaron. Aaron, Aaron says he would be in favor of Louisville football winning, but not in favor of Louisville basketball winning. See, but no, I, seriously, I, I, I'm in favor of all of them winning. I, I would, I would like for, um, I'd like for Kentucky and Louisville to play in this final football game of the season with something on the line for both of them. That's what I'd like to see because then that would be a lot of fun instead of ha having one fan base be like. Uh, all, my only objective is to ruin Louisville's year, you know. Hey, that's what it is. That's but, what it is. I know. Just that's a quick, quick, quick reference back to basketball. Yeah. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's time for Kenny Payne to go. Oh, I thought you were going to say it's time for Kenny Payne to get a raise. A raise for what? I mean, a raise for figuring out ways to lose games and play poorly against teams. You said smoke. I mean, that takes skill. <laughs> But I, just, at this point, I like digging at everybody, at to point, be honest with you. I know you like digging. I know you like digging. <laughs> but at this point, you know, who is available to go? Who do you go try to get? The janitor, the way this team's going. Now, you're taking it a little too far, Josh. <laughs> I <laughs> mean, you, know, you kind of overstep your boundaries <laughs> just about, about, about 40 feet. <laughs> well, I mean, he's available. He's right over there. He's ready for the game to be over with. Might as well see what kind of stuff he could come up with. Santa Claus will not be bringing you gifts this year. <laughs> I know. I'm getting some Louisville coal is what I'm getting. <laughs> and I hope it's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm kind of disappointed because last year I defended Kenny Payne. And I did too, but now it's, it's you know, the comments that he makes, you know, basically we're never going to get good talent that the other teams are getting. That's what you're getting paid for. Yeah. You're supposed to be a recruiter. You can't make excuses and blame it on the players when these are the players you brought here. You brought them. Last year, you had that option because you didn't bring them all there. Now, you could have done a better job. I mean, Kenny Payne could have done a better job recruiting coming into last season, but I could excuse that one. He's had a whole year. If the players aren't the players he wants, well, you brought them here. I mean, just if you, if you, if you feel like you need to fill out the roster, then 
that's probably doing it the wrong way. If you can only five and five guys that play the way you want them to, you only got five guys on scholarship. Right. Bring in a bunch of walk-ons otherwise. I mean, yeah, his his crying about his situation is that's, that's, is, that's, is the part that's really detrimental yeah. for him. Because it's like he's already given up. Yeah. Let's close it out with a could be the highest college football coaches buyout in history. Mr. Fisher? $76 million. Yeah, well. Would you ever try to coach again if you cashed out $76 million? Man, I wouldn't have tried to coach again when I cashed out the prior time for him. I mean, meaning the money he made at Florida State. I wouldn't have even taken the Texas A&M job because. Do nope. you think he knew he would, he would do this and get that big buyout? Heck yeah. He had to have looked at the track record of Texas A&M football and figured out that the last time uh, they didn't have somebody they fired was Bear Bryant in like 1954. Every other coach who's come through Texas A&M is an eight, is an eight and three. So who do they go after? Well, I mean, I know who everybody says they should go after. He's not that going. dude ain't, he would be stupid to go to Texas A&M. Who do you think? Dion would yeah, be stupid. He would, he'd be stupid to go to Texas he's A&M. But he is losing recruits because they think that could happen. Well, I mean, that's people trying to make sure he doesn't get the recruits is what's happening there. That's a good old-fashioned, well, you know, Dion's not going to stay there for very long. He's going to go to a bigger school so he doesn't, so they can cut down on his ability. I mean, to he can't afford to leave. You can't leave Travis Hunter and Shadour because they can't transfer. What, um, what year are they both in? Sophomores. They're both sophomores. Okay. So he's got to be at, he's got to be at uh, Colorado for one more year. One more year. They'll both leave after next year. Yeah. So, I mean, I, look, I don't think I don't think Deion Sanders is long for Colorado, just like I didn't think he was long for Jackson State. Do you think there is a place for Deion Sanders in college football that could be his forever home? Um, FAMU. <laughs> I can't stand you. <laughs> He's not going to Florida A and M. I think eventually he'll be back to Florida State. Florida State would be a logical thing for him. Back to Tallahassee, yeah. where it all started. I mean, must be the money. I mean, it would be, but I mean, I don't think it. I think it would be hard for him there too. I just think. I think in the end, the same thing I say about football all the time: the game's won in the trenches. He has. He's able to get these skill players to follow him because of his own track record as a player. And he's demonstrated he knows. So how do you do? You not think Warren Sapp joining his staff next year is going to help him in the trenches? How many people know who Warren Sapp is? Oh, a lot of people do. Well, I mean, maybe then I don't know. A lot of people know Warren. A lot of the kids it's were not, very excited when they found out that Warren Sapp was joining the staff. It's not, um, and it, it takes longer to build an offensive line than it does to just find skill players. Because you can find, you can clock the skill players. Question is, can you build an offensive line that works together and does things you need it to do? Can you do the same thing on the defensive front? Those are those are units tied together, and so you've got to be able to do that, build the players, and coach them together as a unit. So that's going to be the key. I, I don't know, but I do think Florida State is a perfect place for Deion Sanders eventually, or Famu. Trevin Hayes and this guy. <laughs> Tell me about it. Glasgow Electric Plant Board Channel 6, 104 The Score, and KY Sports TV. Thank you for tuning in again this week, and we'll see you guys next week.